A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I am reminding you, brothers and sisters, of the gospel I preached to you, which you indeed received and in which you also stand. Through it, you are also being saved if you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I hand it on to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 brothers at once, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. After that, he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one born abnormally, he appeared to me. For I am the least of the apostles, not fit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace to me has not been ineffective. Indeed, I have toiled harder than all of them, not I, however, but the grace of God that is with me. Therefore, whether it be I or they, so we preach, and so you believed. The word of the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let the house of Israel say, his mercy endures forever. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has struck with power. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. You are my God, and I give thanks to you. O oh, my God, I extol you. crown beneath the cross of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple there whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. The Gospel of the Lord. When the angel Gabriel appeared to Mary in the Annunciation, there was certainly no indication whatsoever of what really lie ahead. And yet Mary did still say, yes. What did lie ahead? Certainly many question marks, I'm sure. 
But Simeon, that old man, when they presented Jesus at the temple, started to clarify it a little bit more about this child. This child is destined for the fall and the rise of many in Israel. He will be a sign that will be contradicted. And you yourself, Mary, a sword will pierce so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. Today we celebrate the traditional seven dolors or sorrows of Mary. The first being, of course, Simeon's prophecy to her. The second, the flight into Egypt when Herod was seeking the life of their newborn child. The third would be the, would be the uh, looking for Jesus in the temple when he was 12 years old for three days, not knowing where he was. Mary's heart, I'm sure, was filled with much distress and anguish. And then those last four, of course, deal with his suffering and death on the cross. The fourth being Mary encountering Jesus and the carrying of that cross. The fifth, standing there at the foot of the cross. The sixth, when Jesus is lowered from the cross and placed in Mary's arms. And then the seventh and last dolor or sorrow would be that of Jesus being buried in the tomb. Mary stood there at that foot of that cross. She was one with Jesus. He suffered physically in the most terrible way. But Mary suffered spiritually. Indeed, it was a sore that tore through her heart as the spear pierced Jesus' own heart. What does this all teach us? Certainly it teaches us the beauty of our Blessed Mother's role and her participation also in our salvation history, yes. But it can go even more practical for our own selves as well because the one thing that Mary really did was she continually united her being, her heart, to Jesus Christ, her Son. Her Son, but also our Redeemer for all of us. What do we do with suffering? Our human inclination is to complain about it or perhaps even to seek some quick cure or quick remedy. I'm not saying going to the doctor's wrong in any way, shape, or form, but, but Mary took those sufferings and she used them for good. She never complained. She united her own suffering to that of our Lord, to be part of that redemption of our world. And that's where we must take our cue as well. We must take our own sufferings, be it small or large, physical, spiritual, emotional. Our sufferings take on many shapes and forms. We all have them. We cannot escape them. But one thing we can do is unite them to Jesus, as Mary did. And then we, too, become one with Christ and the redemption of this world. And so as we begin this new day together, we unite our hearts to Mary, that immaculate heart, who then unites her heart to Jesus. Mary always points us to Jesus, her son. And that's why we go to Mary. We ask her to always take us to Jesus. And it's there that we place our own sorrows, our own anguish, our own distress, our worries, as well as our physical infirmity. Simply give it to Jesus, and he will use it for this world that needs it so badly. With trust in our Almighty Father, let us turn to God with our needs and the needs of the Church, that all members of our Church may turn to Mary to intercede for us as we strive to live out the Gospel message and live as more faithful disciples of her Son, Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. That nations, torn by ethnic conflict, may through the grace of God, find ways to heal divisions and foster reconciliation among their people 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. That the unemployed and the underemployed may find meaningful work that allows them to support themselves and those who rely upon them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. That young mothers in this faith community may find in Mary a model and a friend, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. We pray for all the faithful departed, especially in this Mass. We remember the repose of the soul of Barbara Grill, and also Mary Hughes, who died one year ago today, and also the priest of our diocese, who died on this day, Father William J. Pell, and for all our loved ones, that they may now enter the fullness of life and love in the heavenly kingdom, let us pray to the Lord. Gracious and loving God, we ask that you hear and answer our many prayers, for we offer them to you through Christ our Lord. Amen.